Come on, praise the Lord. We thank you, Lord. Come on, let us thank him like we really want to thank him. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen and amen. Let's, let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter number 8. We'll read it again for the fourth time today. We're going to read it a few more times, don't worry. We'll come on to Kinsimun on a meeting until you can recite it. From verse number one to verse number four. When he came down, okay, fan, so fitly. See, Baba, the body phone, you have pressed a gas pit where no something was Sasama, two words and to say, Remele, we're not peely. We're not going to swearing the original word. I could will about your phone, you want about swearing baby, little fitly. Amen, yeah, Baba. <laughs> when he came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed him. A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man and said, I am willing to be clean. And immediately his leprosy was cured. Father, thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm not responsible for this. <laughs> and I, my own opinion, I keep on how should ladies see but complain because when I did it, I was like, I was hey, I was like, I was like, I was like, so just keep quiet. Uche. Keep on the hot table, Akira. Huh? Amen. Rubutiko fela minya kubana beso. Amaraska tsunya after na kwenye na hiti itla nyolo la udimu ko. Itla nyolo eh building it fancy i i i kete tse sara msa yona in. Anke be chise hakalo etu ake baba hoti wa. I promise you, if it was men's fellowship, in kabenzo huba tali walish. Hmm. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Okay, fine. Let's get into the word. <laughs> Let's get into the word. Amen. We're talking about healing and deliverance. Now, this is part four, and today I'm going to look uh, with you at uh, what I have entitled, sub-entitled, The Redemptive Work of Christ. How healing, deliverance, peace, Prosperity, rest in the Lord are all part of what we call the redemption of Jesus Christ. We know the book of the Bible says we have been redeemed from the curse of the law. But what is redemption? How did the redemption come into the picture? And what is, what is the impact of redemption? And what does redemption do in a person's life? And how from where you are at, you could actually tap into that state, sir, I am redeemed not only from sin and sick, uh, sin and, and uh, condemnation or damnation, but also from everything that keeps me uncomfortable. How the redemption of Jesus, how the work that Jesus did on the cross, what impact it has over your life. You know, there are those times in Muruti Temba where you have prayed. Like I said on Friday, after a disease has left you, the spirit of disease after it has left you, but you are left with the symptoms. But I that. I made an example about uh, when you, are, you, are, you have a back room or a room in your yard where you have listed out to the untidiest person ever. When you gave them the keys, when they, they viewed it for the first time, it was speak and span. But when they leave, they leave it in a demonized state. The person, the cause of the chaos, 
leaves, but you are left with a mess. That is how I explain the, the symptoms of healing on Friday. Or after the spirit has been evicted, do not be fooled by the cockroaches and everything that hangs around in your body. Evict them. So how the redemption gives you that ability to realize, you know what? Even a man who's been in jail for 15 years, who came out on Friday, they still smell of jail. They still have a habit. They, they need orientation. They don't, you know, a man who's been uh, knocked down uh, and, and uh, out, totally out, when he wakes up or when he rises up, he has to be rehabilitated. So does your body. You know that. So the redemption is uh, this one thing, ailing Hore. When you have uh, received uh, by faith um, your healing, your, your job, your, your promotion, your breakthrough, and it seems like you're still where you were at, where you go like what Jesus has redeemed changes by the day. Where you begin to expect change by the day. And now you begin to hang on to, I have been redeemed from the cassia, yeah? the disease, the everything. And what Jesus does, he always does a clean job. Amen. So what he does, he always does a clean job. There are processes in God. Before he made the wine, they had to go get the pots. Fill them with water. And up to the point where he said, take it to the owner of the party, it was still water. So we need to be a people of faith. Come on. Hey, Ibanta, let us you. We need to be a people of faith. You have everything to gain and nothing to lose. When you stand your ground and say, Disease, you have left my body, you are dead. By faith, you were evicted through prayer. Now, from today, I'm cleaning the room. I'm cleaning where you used to be. So we're not paying a little to lens and the chamber. Let's see we're mocking twani. Sisazo paint a little room. Sisazo vulama fastera. Kushayu moya. Si chin shim yang chin and a See that? So redemption is it, something that it's, it's a process that Jesus went through on our behalf. Please understand. Do not be fooled by the fact that when you cough, I said on Friday, you're still coughing blood. Keep coughing. Keep spitting that blood and saying, you're getting out of my body never again. And one day you cough and nothing comes out. Expect that to happen. Expect yourself to function properly one morning. Therefore, that is why everybody who has been prayed for should continually try and do what they could not do before. Jesus said to the woman, stretch your hand. Peter said to the man, stand up. He said to the man by the sea of Bethesda, he said to him, stand up, take up your mat and go. So you have to do that. Otherwise, you'll be sitting with a room and unoccupied. Matthew 12, 43. When an evil spirit goes out of a man, it goes into dry, arid places, seeking a place to rest, and he doesn't find it. Then it says, I will go back to my house. Then it finds it swept, kept, but unoccupied. When I said that, the, the tenant has been evicted. But the person has actually left that vacuum. Yeah, the demonic spirit should come back. And he says, when it sees that space, it goes and gets seven other spirits more wicked than itself. In our ministry of praying for people, the next day, hey, go west of Salwani. This time around, the one who only pay one. Saying I'm paying nine seventeen. I'm going to go by a condo account. I'm paying. How can you want to go? What's going on? What's going on? I'm saying that you fourteen. One, two, three, four, five. Eh, eh. But, you know, that's an evil spirit trying just to go get some reinforcement. Okay. So let's talk about the redemption. Let's go to Galatians chapter number 3, verse 13. 
Galatians 3, 13. 13, yes. It says Christ, not Jesus. It, it says Christ. Why Christ? Because Christ, Matthew 18. Who do, Jesus stands there and says to them, who do people say that I, the son of man, is? Then they give him all the catalog. Then he says to them, who do you say that I am? Peter says, but you are the Christ, the son of the living God. So Christ has redeemed us, not Jesus. Christ had to come, we'll read that when we get to the book of Hebrews, where he came and he said to God, put me in a body. That I could put him in a body, I'm paraphrasing, with this people. The man who has been touched and tempted by every temptation they ever went through, yet he was still sinless. He walked at the shores of Galilee, he healed people, and he was never, never transformed into being like them. But because he was born of a woman who was not exempt from failure, he could not totally bring redemption. So he had to put uh, Jesus uh, as a body. God had to put Christ in him, the son of the living God. God himself, who has never touched sin, who has never failed in any way, who is the supreme being, who is the leader of everything that is good on earth, who is the word that created the heavens and the earth, who became flesh and dwelt amongst us. So I read Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. I read, no, Jesus has redeemed us. Okay, fine. Maybe you have a right to say Jesus Christ has redeemed me. But the redemption came through Christ. God putting himself into the body of a suffering man. And this is where we come to receive Jesus. And this is where sometimes it is so when the going gets tough, you begin to tell the demon and every disease in your body, who will look, dude, I'm not alone. I have received Christ Jesus in my life. I have received the Redeemer, who, the one who redeemed me from sin, now made his abode in me. I am the temple. And that's why I said some weeks ago, Keep this body clean. It's not yours. You are just a tenant there. You know, you mustn't be like a, a 18, 19. When you go like, hey, me and your mom will be going go camping. Oh, we're going to miss you. We're going to miss you. So, ooh, when are you leaving? You can tell. Or, hey. So what time will you be coming back? <laughs> hey. And please, don't hit yourself because you're surprised. When you said you'll come back at 10, rather come back at 12. At least the same day. Don't come back early. You know what I'm trying to say? Okay, let me run. Let me run. So it says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Now the word is self-curse. When somebody is operating under a curse, nothing in this world works for them. And that is why I have said, you know what, when your children make you angry, count your words, be angry and sin not. The story of Jacob is so, and Isaac, or Isaac, Jacob, and Esau, Remember the story? How, how a man spoke words that turned somebody's life forever. The story of son Noah when he came out of the ark. He made himself some grape juice. They yeah, fermented too much. Then he lay there naked. When he woke up, he spoke something that turned somebody's life forever. Now when a man is cursed, look, when somebody curses their child... The child could be a professor by profession. It's the kind of people who are headhunted, who don't put CVs. The minute the parent puts a curse on them, their life could be ruined forever. Because parents have got the blessing, the parental blessing over their children. And that is why parents find it in your heart to speak well. Even be objective, speak about the issue. Don't curse them. When you curse them, you're cursing them, the generation and generation and generation. Some of them are born in curses. Now, Jesus could not set people free from curses. He healed the sick. 
He went about, the Bible says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power and how he went about doing good and healing all of those who were oppressed by the devil because God was with him. But Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. So the curse can only be removed by God. And that's why parents should not actually pray. Some of you, you curse yourselves. Make glory on another why curse someone good. For interviewing Jay. I know I won't get the job. The one and Chevy Lampera thing in Tatolo was Satan only. Must think as to look great. You're kissing yourself. Why place a kiss on yourself? We were brought up by people who know who knew almost little, little to nothing about God. Absolutely. But one about who decided they never knew anything about Mudim. One of the so. Honalim sutu somewhere masiba asang aitse herta shwakil tatile. Shwaya. It was to bada shwaya. It's hot. But are you going to die from it? But it's part of the language, Akiri. Hera safa amakaza. Is it part of the amakaza? No, but it's language. But remember, in the realm of the spirit, words are like passports or visas. In the realm of the spirit, words are keys. No idle word. In the realm of the spirit, every word was meant to create. Because when God created, he said, let there be light. And there was light. And I have put that word in your mouth. That's what the Lord says. Or much, Jeremiah, do not look down on yourself. I have put my word in your mouth. You'll be a prophet to these people. You will speak and it will happen. So Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Let's go back. By becoming now, look, he could not stand there and say, I remove the curse. He says he, be, he, redeemed, he, he redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. So how do you actually uh, understand this one? I'll make an example. Fine. First, let me, let me explain the word redeemed. Then I'll show you how he redeemed us by becoming a curse for us. Thank you. So the word redemption, it refers mainly to the work of Christ on our behalf. The work of Christ on our behalf. Because there is no self-redemption. Man has no power to redeem himself. Okay, we use the word angata, right? You know what? Hey, I might as well go a redeemer. I made a mess. Fine. It's figurative speech. You may go there and repent and say, I'm sorry, but you know, redemption is something bigger than that. Because redemption, you can't redeem, you can't need redemption and redeem yourself. When it comes to redemption, you need somebody who didn't do what you did. Somebody who has more power than you. Because redemption is more like you are kidnapped and you need a, 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 a special unit to come and get you out. But to our ring, no, hell no. We are not going to give those criminals the five million they want. We are going to put it in a bag as five million. They are going to see it, but they are not going to walk away with it. We'll come back with you. That's what Jesus did. Because when, he, when our redemption uh, was the case, the devil would not take anything except your life. Satan does not want to keep you captive. He wants you to go to hell. I said to you some time back, the only logic behind how the devil is fighting and making sure he gets as many people as possible on his side. The devil thinks the more of the image of God he comes with before God on the day of judgment. The compassion of God. When God sees how many crowds have, have followed him and how many people are going to hell, God might change his mind because he's a wonderful God. He's a forgiving God. If I was the devil in now, I would do that. I have messed up. I can't say sorry. I can't be forgiven. Therefore, kidnap as many as possible of his children so that on the day of judgment, he doesn't send only me to hell, but sends his own image to hell. But they're going to come with the fed up. When I was one of Salah Satan, Utino, Utino, Usala Satan, Ukopanic alien, Ubupilikimang. You are not created by the devil. You are created by God for his own glory 
to show forth the glory of the one who created you. When on Satan sang a new group. I was so disturbed this morning. Yesterday, I was reading this other, uh, uh, I have a clip in my phone, yeah, this preacher who just went, uh, who, who passed away. His last words, he says to his followers, Uri, I am dying, and whether I'm going to heaven on, on the, or the other side, you'll always be on my mind. The same words Mandela said, Mandela would say, I'm not going to heaven, I'm going next door. Naka Mamela. Viva, comrade, viva. Kirmocho, you see? That is so sad. That is so sad. A man who walked with God for over 40 years, he's dying there, he's 70. His last words, he's saying to his people, You'll always be on my mind whether I'm going to heaven or the other side. They should run for their life while they can. Karmoho mudimu interpreter said mudimu ke kopa untuse hore la ha lo reke ne ke tloya the other side ke realize ke se ka siya batho ba hao ba le lefelleng Leave them with something, with a crutch, something to hold on until they meet their maker. So redemption refers mainly to the work of Christ on our behalf, chiefly, supremely, to the work of Christ on our behalf. We did nothing. All we did was to be in bondage. Whereby he purchases us, he ransoms us at the price of his own life. Now, let me stop here. You are a, woman, a wife, your husband gets hijacked or kidnapped. You know your financial strength. Then you get a call, they say, look, we won't kill him unless you just give us 200,000 rands. And you know, what are 200,000 runs between you and Ali, Leona. And then you call them back and you say, I'm sorry, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the But no, I'm going to go to the house. I'm That's the that position that Jesus was in. When you are captivated by the devil, in sin and everything else, eh? there was not enough price on earth. Nothing that would compare with your soul. How good you are sitting there today, maybe you don't even have two coins to rub together, but you are more than worth. Jesus couldn't buy you because you are so worth. He had to come into your own shoes. Fortunately, when he said, devil, Satan will okay, fine. And he came and he set you free. And now for you to run back there again. And that's why Paul says, you know, when we keep sinning, we crucify him again and again. And then they end up by concluding by saying, eh, the hardest thing ever to do is to restore a backslider. Because it cost somebody's life to buy you out. Now imagine if your husband is kidnapped every month end. Ah, it's suka. Eh, eh. What's that? Say, Monique, I will write a mar. Eh, I will write a kidnapper. Khwedi li khwedi. Eh, eh. Haba phone or moho bona. Ah, eh, che mungkeng. Kichatezi. But it's a mula ori. Eh, san lehi kaba yinka yena. You feel it. Am I, am I making sense? Fine. Now, redemption refers mainly to the work of Christ on our behalf, whereby he purchases us, he ransoms us at a price, the price being his own life, securing our deliverance from the bondage and the condemnation of sin. We were condemned to go and die. 
Now, a man condemned back then, when there was still the death penalty, the magistrate would say, the state hereby condemns you. You are condemned to death. And they would explain this. You would hang with your life, with your neck, until you did. Go America, or electrify, or shop on Jackson, or get over the incident in Atanyana. I wonder that. Marim. When a man is condemned, it means there is no hope for them. It's no hope for them. So when you say to your children and you are angry, asking, especially when you amount to nothing, that's condemning. Now, when the was still alive, when the parents were 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 still alive, when the parents you will become something. You may not come to a child and say, "Kikopa tsharula hani kero otoba ntofela." Maru kato wazarikin mufanaka. We nanze go rappel la mudimu tlo tsharno lo fata. We mefara di tsawari. We zarikin otoba something mo pilong. We na liba na bahau. Because some 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 people are working here. The, 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 the devil had no choice. They were already condemned. Okay, fine. Now, Jesus Christ bought our freedom and his blood became the payments for man's redemption. This makes him to be man's one and only redeemer appointed by God. Now, when it comes to redemption, no living being in our generation will redeem you. No religious leader has power to redeem you. You can never, ever, ever look at somebody today and see redemption. That's idol worship. And as soon as an idol stands you between, stands between you and God, this is where you are going to end up going into reverse mode where God found you and you are damned and condemned because putting your faith in it, woe unto him who puts his faith in man. In the book of Job, man is nothing but an, eight, an atom in the space samudim. He says about uh, but, uh, uh, like a speck of dust. Could normally, I normally say, no, God, God by himself, God being God, has to make effort to notice man on earth. That's how small we are. So God is forever making effort to see us. We are that small. If the earth in the eyes of God is just but maybe like the size, yeah, 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 Busy walking up and down. Really, you need some. Kuri Mudimu makes effort to recognize us. We need to realize Hore, that speck of dust on this speck of dust called the earth, that minute micro speck of dust on a, on a minute speck of dust. See, it's only fat. Because the first couple of lay my new tivel, my minute micro dust on the speck of dust, Mudimu makes so much effort to see you. Therefore, you can never afford or being a speck of dust on this earth. Then you go and you exalt another speck of dust and look at it as your redeemer. But then, because of how the hierarchy of creation, how God gave the parents the power to bless or to condemn. Another speck of dust is offended by an even smaller speck of dust, which came out of his loins. And this is not only for Batswari, Lilo Nabana to Helang Hotel Nabatswari Balloon. A parent is not a parent because he's sober. What makes somebody a parent is because they gave birth to a child. The child can be more intelligent a hundred times more than the parent, but they still have a parent. Up to when my mother was 87, I would go and see her at my sister's place. She was old. From when she was 80, every time I paid the Please pray that I may die. She, that's how she was. Alexander did show me. You know that. So, but she would say, she would, at 87, every time I went to my sister's place, she would be in her bedroom sitting there. The first thing she would say to me would say to me, Can I make you tea? I mean, answer to Tumela. Utafita, Kishinikel, Hai Hula Kishin. 
Now I want to ten steps. Marufu, I know this is guy. Get there and everything. But now, what I'm going to say here, I, my, my mom loved me until the day she, she died. She loved the kids. Because we never offended her. When her husband left her, when I was only about nine, I did my first job at 17, 1976. All I had in my mind was how am I going to help my mother to survive? I became a policeman. Imagine, swam upstream. Much of the police station. I want to buy a toy. I will cause me to be sell out. I have been full of trouble. I worked and I worked and I did everything. I support. I, I blessings are solicited. Isaac says to Jacob, to Esau, go and cook me the food you know I like the most. Then when I'm eating, I'm going to bless you before I die. You don't wake up one morning. Now, parents, I'm not saying your kids should be model kids. But when you are there and your children uh, have actually offended you, do not drive them into hell, into the hands of the devil. And the Luanangwana, who so long say, Mitzi Maulin Tata, who go hen so because one or a firstborn, firstborn, I own anything. Good fellow, kill a pill, which them look on and glue and our pill. I go fed to him. If you can't live with your parents, you are better off living in a shack, looking like you are disadvantaged, but with a blessing over your head, than living in that house and becoming the boss with a curse over your head. But Christ has redeemed. You have been redeemed. And make right. everything. Inside Because the, you know, the, the redemption at Jesus is too serious. Okay, fine. So he, he bought our freedom and his, with the, and his blood became the payment for man's redemption. This makes him to be man's one and only redeemer appointed by God. So that redemption means, it simply means Jesus did the supreme work of buying us. So redemption means being bought. It's like somebody paying a ransom. Hardly in the natural you get kidnapped and you can't afford and your wife calls somebody who has the money that's needed. You owe that person in your life. You are actually his slave because there was a price on your head that you could not pay. There was a price. Simple. I get kidnapped. Joyce and I tell you to phone them to see to see what about Azali to be. How about the reporters are guarding? And I say, oh, lang abuse are going to be redeemed. But eh eh, we're talking about the same. Tell the truth, but the thing is, they don't want to let me talk about it. I can't wait to rule Joyce now because we're stubborn. We can't afford a gardener now because we ransomed you. And while you are at it, Muruti, you are totally sporty before Zama. Because you are not going to ask for a lot of money. showing you the extent to which they went. But you are going to ask So, you are going to ask for a lot of money, Muruti. That's what you first tell you. So, you are going to realize, huh? You are going to ask for That's how much it took to buy you. You are going to ask for a lot of money. So So they have spent everything. Now that's in a nutshell. That's what redemption means. You have been bought with everything they had. Now saving God and living for God, Mam Gloria, is worth everything. You are doing it's a duty. You have been saved by grace, but with redemption, you were bought with a price. 
If you understand the relationship, you understand very well, Muruti Temba, how Paul Ari, Ari now, I'm a bond slave. Paul Ari, you know what? I have a right to walk away, but I choose to stay because I understand the contract. You understand, Ari? I'm not of myself. I was bought with a price. Therefore, I will glorify God with my body and everything else. I will die saving God, and that's it. I will turn my back against everything. When God found you, you were in traditions and everything and culture, witchcraft, they couldn't redeem you. He redeemed you. You have no right to go back with the redeemed body. I see body how we take it back to the redemption, to the, to the witchcraft. Serve God. You are violating the terms of the redemption. You are nullifying the power of the gospel, the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, the power of the death of Jesus Christ. Okay, Papa, remember what happens? I go to Otsuwe, Otsuwe, we mukubu, we mukreste. We mukuta kubu. This is what makes a life that has been redeemed to have the impact that Jesus meant. In theology, redemption means that something has been paid for or bought back like a slave who has been set free through the payment of a ransom. In theology, it means that. Something has been just been bought. Let me give you an example. Yeah, the redemption. We've seen that many times. Boys go into the field. They trap birds. Put them in a cage. Take the cage, stand by the roadside, and they sell the birds. Somebody would come and say, How much? But no, it's about 10 runs each. Negotiate a price. See? I ain't get a bed from the boys. Then they go and put it in their ca another cage in their house. I redeem as such. Because it's still enslaved. But it's a type of redemption. You're bought from the devil. Jesus comes, buys you, puts in his cage. You're not free, but you're free from the devil. Okay, get a pit up. Give one of the way. <laughs> Boys go into the field, lay a snare, put food, birds come, eat, they pull the snare, catch the birds. Now the birds have lost their freedom. They will never see their families anymore. They will never freely fly again. They will never have a choose to their diet, and they will never actually have their, 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 their territory, never again. They are going to enter into a new territory. For that particular moment, they are caged. Then these boys, they go to the, by the roadside. Then they put the beds there, and somebody comes and says, how much are the beds? But are 10 runs, and there's about 10 or 15 beds. He buys one for 10 runs, takes it, and how are you going? We forget to in our So the uncomfortable situation that you go through when Jesus saves you, and the uncomfortableness you should serve him against your, your desires is worth it. You are in a cage, but there's Satan. So you don't want to be in the pocket of Jesus. Who suffocated, but because he bought, he won't kill you. Then he, this man takes it home, then puts it in another cage. Yeah, it has been redeemed. It is still enslaved, but to a master who means well. But then, another man comes. He stops by the roadside in the car. He have a phone. He knows, but I he knew not how much. They say 10 runs each. Or they push up the price because of the man they see. 15 runs each. Then he says to them, how much? How many are they? But the count about is it 10. Then he says, okay, but the tiny cage. Then he opens up the cage door. Then they all fly away and he gives them the 150 rents. That's what Jesus did. But then the birds, when they get out there, they will fly. They, they have something like a radanyana. So birds know direction. I don't know GPS. Might have got a built-in GPS. They would fly back to the same environment where they were caught. Because that's where they used to live. So the devil knows where to catch you. Oh. Amen. 
So, the first thing they do when the cage is opened, they fly back to where they were. And now, let's take the minds of two birds among the two, among the many. Two, one has learned this lesson. The one says no matter how much they put in the snare again as food, I won't take it. But the other bit banks on the redemption. It says, I'll eat again. That man who thought, I was just telling her food. Can't take this time around, the man doesn't come. And now the boys have to take you home in a cage. Put you there by the wall without water. And then they will take a piece of bread by fact, eight and say with cock on him. And then you die in the cage. After having been redeemed. This is where the hardest thing to do is to restore a backslider. And that is why you need to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Because that the Ogbanjo Cajun, what bears are going to suffer, they have lost their freedom. They will never know more a food. They will be plagued by diseases and everything else. This is exactly what we go through as human beings. We find ourselves uncomfortable in our skins, even after we've been redeemed. So when Jesus redeems you, and well, I sit here by the grace of God, follow him. You get the point, because you know, by 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 by, by sina, sina, that uh, inherent desire to live where we used to live, to do the things we used to do, and that is exactly why Jesus said to come. Look, I don't care how better you were than your neighbors before you came to the Lord. You and them were in the same environment, same cage. That's why Paul, I said again, he calls himself a born slave. Good Paul, in his cage, when Jesus opens and says, uh, free. Are. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. One now, you know what? We we don't wanna uh refree mar refree. Because I only realize when I have to make choices, Mama Lulek, but I'm not actually free. I look free, but I'm not free. Because when I live in Nali one Navabang, how was I the choice here? See? I I now realize at this point, I'm not free. But I'm still caged. And I would rather pull the door. My master asked, okay, well done. Thou good and faithful servant. Because I know the price he had the redemption from sin, sickness, disease. And I can sh I show you now, who you know, you know, birds that are caught in the wild, listen to me carefully. Birds that are caught in the wild, that are free in the wild, they eat organic food. How so you Kenya Satan no shapaka pap? Lipitruti, what shapaka pitruti? original ha jesu re mo caging mare safe Hona ba fana ba di keti hona di snazi keji nyani mari tuti le hore re tsebo re no le so o kotsi mahlo o re ke tsebo ra ke mrwa ke 5 steps so ha ke 5 ke ya 4 ke re 4 is a clear space nyana modesom ke tsebo o chinchwa le metsi 
Back in the Lipelina, a camera cage, come and saying you've been a bin a music or a ten or a chin. Nanny, no, and it's in the second strat and the first a cafe. Eh, what will feel or eh, eh, Luna, the Sato Tara. Are you okay? Come on, let us stand the Lord. So after he has been, after he has redeemed us and bought us with his own life. Now, this example will help you better. When they say, when the whole play now is no longer the boys, the birds, and the men who bought them. Now, this time around, the play is you, the devil, and Jesus. So the devil has you. By the roadside, he caught you in your sins and everything, your traditions and the, 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 the hardness of your heart and the things you learned from your forefathers, the gods you worshipped, everything else is wrong. Living for yourself, not caring about the laws of God. And the devil had you in the cage. Jesus comes there and he realizes, or there is no price to set this person free. He opens the door, redemption here. You come out, he gets into the cage, he closes. Then the devil has the master, Jesus, in the cage. That's the act of redemption. He took your place. No wonder there is hell for people who don't appreciate that kind of sacrifice. It said, huh? Let me be honest with you guys. I've always said this, not just to spook you out, but to be real, to be real with you. You see the chair you're sitting on? You're not the first, in, first person to sit here. Somebody sat on the same chair. I would come and ask one earlier. Who did today? From this very church. People die from church and go to hell. Some people. Not everybody, of course. You know, if you like, I don't know what you to lose. Or back to send. If church made people go to heaven, it would be obvious while we are at church who are we all going to heaven. But in every church, there is a person from time to time who misses eternity. Don't be that person. After so many, so many years I've known you, from being a young man, That, that would hurt me the most. To be looking around, call the demon, like I was somebody carry. Lanka twan some two one fellow wash away over it. Ah, habayo, officially only one. Oh Lord. After working with God for forty years, this is my fortieth year in the Lord. After working with God for forty years. I have seen so much grace. I have st I started talking about almost half year. I promise you. At some point, one person came and said, the husband, You are so valuable. God, for real, but I was ready to die 14 years ago. I came to reality. I'm 50, thank you. And I'm ready to die. And uh, death has been on my lips. But what he told about it, for me to live is Christ, Paul said, Philippians 1, to die is gain. But what would be the point 
emotions if he did heaven would be a very frustrating place especially for Rona, who just want nothing from you but that your soul should be saved God knows my earnest heart's desire. Ke ho bona o tswile mo matsong a satan. Ha lo re le ho di mong ba ka ske ba re ghalemela fo language ke tla ikutla ke bitsa njo ke re he comrade ku njana. Le ba rona no comrades here saints. But I would love to see you there. Now, this should be true comradeship. They are fighting this battle side by side, shoulder by shoulder. Let's get that together, says Pindile. Hare I know that would never happen, but let's get to heaven. Let us make our master happy. We heard the word. We received it with gladness of heart. We are aware that the devil had us and no one could ransom us. Our traditions, the traditions of our fathers, Kuku, everything our, fa our fathers stood for. Very few of you had fathers who would show you Tzilamudim. God in his grace, he made our paths to cross. Let us celebrate this and begin to make eternal appointments. There's a brother in the Lord who took Mishak Murti Temba Matsiba. Mishak we went to the same school there in Isaacson Primary. He preached the gospel from standard three. He preached. Principal and Abashapa. Principal Nohe would beat them. When Mishak and Bopapani, when Mama and Narafa was striking, he would beat them up for preaching. He would call them and tell them never to preach. They would be beaten for preaching during school days, school uh, break. They would continue to preach. Mishak stayed in Mulapa. We stayed in Morocco. Not one day there was this one guy. A criminal, but it's not about causing too much next to be Kutsa stores from Morocco North. So, Mishak is standing there, he is preaching. I think he was doing standard four or so. He stood there preaching. He stabbed him on the head. He stood there preaching, blood flowing from his head, flowing down his garments. Holy Red, my mentor, he stood in a pool of blood and continued to preach. He is still a Christian until this day. And his greatest, his greatest salutation from day one, when he goes, he says, He says that until now. He said that from when I knew him for the first time, 1971. The last time he was here, another soldier, he said the same thing. He's been expecting the coming of the Lord since the early 60s. Those are people who were bought and they stayed. <laughs> now, when a man stays from when he was in primary school, 
I think Mishakiki Asia Mumuruti Ruben Matun. He is still preaching the gospel. He never married, he's single, he has no kid to his name. He stayed with God and he still finds joy in the Lord. He has redeemed once and for all. These are some of the people you look at and when you think you've been saving God, you say like, you know what? Some people have gone miles ahead of us. We're not trying to say occasionally, but we're not trying to say occasionally, but somebody will get again. You must be ashamed of yourself. Or some people received him once. That, that scenario, it, 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 it haunted me. Next up, Puloswa. But the day I saw Mishak as a Christian, it made sense. No ambulance came, my end. He stood there. My dear, I be a oma. Ha atu hamole Mishak. Manang I met thing. Tell a pool of blood with two spots that dry. Morning. My biza died within a month or so. Mutana Mkwaza, he was stabbed and died. Just like that. Ya trenda hori. Him tolu na kwaza Mishak ushwile. When nobody stabs you, Nobody pushes you around. So with the redemption where there is no price, that's what people think. To the birds, they don't know a price was paid. Most when I, the gate was opened. After the man opened the cage and he gave the boys the money, the birds flew back into the forest. The boys followed them back. We looked sort of happy. They're going to catch them again. Bring them again and hope the man comes again. My question is, what if he doesn't come around this time? And you end up in a cage, you're sat down in a backyard, there are witch doctor somewhere. But feed her the proteins, because it. That's why the, still the hardest thing ever to restore a backslide and fundus is still the hardest thing. The hardest thing ever. Let's go to Isaiah 53. Now what is described in Isaiah 53, it's still part of the redemption, but it shows you how Jesus went through the process that you were supposed to go through. Remember, he was crucified with two criminals. You know, some people have what we call discerning, a discerning spirit. Say discerning. What is discernment? Hunali something moment. Hunali that thing. This mirror, Monali, this voice that everybody hears, it, it's here. We didn't voice him. But the second break, it's the weakest ever. Give him a five, five amps or so. You know, the weakest, you know, five. The lights give him a 15, the, the plaque give him a 20. And then give him a 30, quality, kids are heavy. But the weakest second break, give him a five amps. How can I get a little bit of it? That's your conscience. Second break, I'm not weak. I'm not resistant, that voice, he, he, it speaks. And when you don't recognize it, the open window closes. 
These are words. These are, these, are, these are voices that somebody remembers. When I left you, my mother said, We are a guy. And I said, I'm not a guy. That's it. Hey, that's it. The Lord sent me the same voice. I said, I spoke about this many times. Come March 1983. No, 82. Tabisa was there. Spiwe and Musa Zuma. Machemen Muswati. I forgot Tubatana. Jeremiah Munaring was there. There were six guys or so. God tried to touch my conscience. God was a circuit breaker. In three months' time, I needed God. And He seemed so far. He brought some guys to my home on a Saturday morning. I said the story many times, and they tried to. They came there, they didn't know what to say. Hey, hey, ta, hey, ta. Hey, would like to tell about Jesus. Karna, Luna, tell me about Jesus. Did I invite you? Switch the circuit breaker off. I dismissed them, they walked away. It would take me. The, the, the conversation at Kalibona never lasted five minutes. It would take me six months. No, three months. October, November, December, January. November, December, January. Three months. Waiting eagerly to go to church. The full invitation. Kisarubala for six months. In the redemption of the Lord. If I just a small window, a small window cuckoo that closes easily, come on, yeah. Just who could really face that thing? Gone. I know, I know, latch is strong enough because God, as the Creator, cannot beg man. You get the point? There's a God can't beg man. He created him for His own glory. It is man. Prayer is, God never prays to man. He answers man's prayers. So it's man who should be sending petitions to God, begging God. And that's why the least God said was, you know, come, let's reason together. And when God says danger coming, I'm a third generation preacher. My grandfather was a preacher after whom I'm named. His son was a preacher, my father, third generation. When God sent those guys, he wanted to save me. Mark, I realized, I get it. I realized, I'm not going to in this family. I realized, he wants to be faithful, maybe, to my grandfather who was in heaven. I won't take your, your grandson through my tata. The grandson became stubborn. I agree with you, take you one. Yes, the window closed. Second break, I had three. I'm going to go to the next one. Then I suffered from March. I suffered June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January. I couldn't wait to go to church. I remembered whilst I was DJing where I must be in church in the morning. Left the stock fell at around four in the morning. Go on and slept for about two hours. Half past eight, I was at church. He wanted to redeem me. Anhompa. Anhompa mudimu arumela di messengers ta haye. Zata on a Saturday, kill the day off. Zakokota zari can we give you Jesus? God, I don't want him. But they turned and they left. We didn't want to be alone. We didn't come here for seven months.
maburu bana lelen tsulereng as jeka ni huorne ban mo je full siri so i ran to church that sunday morning murti temba ni lena interpreter ya terimize and good sip la murti ruben matuna I never looked back since then. Sometimes I can still feel the torture, the burning. I had some skin allergy. Kabeke yako wish doctor ngengwe abampantelezi. Yona ka byona. Intelezi yona ka byona. Hausa tsibo ska tsunye. Ikariki onyo ni so. We kina mo metsing uhlaphe. Ke na le allergy ya skin mem Florian. Are ke kene mo le ke hlaphe. I I was almost losing my mind. I was scratching ka montle ka le bota. My body e bleeder. Ke ne ke tsone se o bleeder na hore ke pholoswe na. He rejected the offer. Yes, somebody opened the on my behalf. Somebody who carried that punishment. Yadi bizaka. Kai reject the offer, okay? Obatla hui plidi ela wena kira. I plidi ela he, no problem. Let's see if your own pleading will save you. Didn't save me. And now I remember something. The jacket I was wearing that day was a wonderful jacket. The next week I gave it to Muruti Ruben Matun. The only jacket I had in my wardrobe. The two after the jacket, I gave it to Ruben Matun. It was a wonderful jacket. I got one of the back in the back of It's been a journey. But I knew I belonged there. Never look back. My pastor in three months' time, in, in, in six months' time, my pastor became a man. When I was in high school, I was in high school. Two years older than him. I was in high school. I was in high school. Always quiet. I had to serve him. Served him like I never crossed paths with him before. Sent me around. I did everything. Redemption goes a long way. You are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in everything you do. Because you are bought to serve the one who bought you. Nobody is totally free. People will look at you and say, "Ah, I want to go to Jesus. Show me one free person." Are you coming to free? And it's been forty years. Never let that window close. It's quite good. You'd have to wait another period, longer than today, for the window to open again. 
And I'm going to go Satan would have his, ba- his best days ever with you. God, he saw the messengers who came. In the book of Genesis, chapter number 2. Just read this and we'll go home. It says, and the Lord commanded the man, verse number 16. The Lord commanded the man... You are what? You what? To do what? From anything. Free to do anything. You are free to eat from any tree in the garden. But you must not do what? You must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat of it, what's going to happen to you? You're going to die. At the margin of the same notes, I got the Bible, I wrote something down. Or the first thing God said to Adam was, you free. Adam never gave Adam and Eve the impression that they were enslaved to him. Slavery to God becomes better when it's voluntary. When it's voluntary, Slavery to God becomes much better. It's, you are called a bond slave. You could walk away if you want to, but you choose not to. The Bible describes an occasion called the Jubilee, where it was it every 49 years, seven times seven. Every 49th year, slaves would be able to go free. But depending on the type of master they had, some slave would say to the master, eh, because when you are in slavery, including your children, leave the wealth you accumulate. How your master are, look, I'll pay you a goat every year. And he gives you goat, goat, goat the first three years, and some ten years later, you've got 50 goats, and 49 years later, you've got a thousand goats. They're not yours. If you are enslaved to somebody, everything you have is theirs. This is where people don't understand slavery or don't understand the redemption. Then after 49 years, you, have, you are rich, you've got everything, you've got children. You're sending me your master. You are within the confines of that master. The master can say to you, okay, look, Debza, you're free to go. But some slaves would say, no. I ch- you've been such a wonderful master, I choose to stay. From that day, you become a bond slave, a voluntary slave. But then what does that tell your master about you? Appreciation. appreciate. He says to Adam and Eve, you are free. Now, Adam and Eve were free, never bound or enslaved to anybody including to God himself. God said, Bonner, you have rights. You can, if you want to disobey me, you can disobey me. He told them the benefits and the consequences. That's why somebody worry, are you are free to choose anything, but you will never be free from the consequences of your choices. Be free, choose anything. But the one freedom you can never be free from. Now look at this. The day you choose something that's going to bind you, you are in the cage. Your choices would get you back into the same cage.
So when it says Christ, Galatians, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Is it Galatians chapter number 3, verse 13? Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Because it says, cursed is everyone who hung on the tree. So that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the, the Gentiles through faith. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. Because it is written that cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through faith or through Christ Jesus. So that by faith we might receive the promise of the Holy Spirit. Now look at this. Where he is Lord. Where redemption, Mampu, where redemption is embraced. The same spirit which raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. And when he dwells in you, he shall quicken your dying body. And he will quicken your mortal body. He will make your body immortal. Kuri, you may be ruled out. People will say, I can sikasi fail silimosim. You will attain immortality until the day you expire. After every opinion, when God would have restored you totally, He has redeemed you so that the gift and the promise of the Spirit might come. The same Spirit which raised Him from the dead shall raise your body, shall raise your body, shall raise your body. It shall raise your body. It shall raise your body. It will quicken your body. You will live and not die until you have declared the message of God. Until you have shown the light of God to the nations. You will live and not die. You will find that job and become prosperous. Why? Because you receive the redeeming power of the blood of Jesus. Get into the cage with the master. Cut off your freedom. Live within the confines of his will. It is safer in his presence. Not only are there full as a fullness of joy and riches on his right side and everything else, but there is favor, there is peace, there is safety, there's multiplication, there's growth, there's answers. When you keep praying and praying and praying and praying and nothing happens, understand the redemption. Have you been redeemed? Have you yielded to the redemption? Are you living within the confines of the laws of the one who redeemed you? Are you aware that you were bought with a price? Are you aware that you need now, over and above being bought, you need to be a slave? He says you are free, but will you run out of the cage and go, or will you shut the cage and say, Master, it's safer here. I choose to stay with Jesus. Stand up, please. Come on, let us thank him. In the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter number 5, 23, this one line here, 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, may the God himself, may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. May God himself sanctify you through and through and may he keep your whole body, your whole spirit, your whole body and your whole soul completely blameless. Good free from any affliction. Free from anything. That's what the redemption does. Takes away everything that was put on you by the devil. He doesn't just change your environment. He changes your state altogether. He changes your condition. He gives you back the kind of freedom that God wants you to have. 
Receive your freedom today in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. Receive today in the name of Jesus. Receive your deliverance today in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that this spirit has got no power over your daughter and your son in this place today. When a spirit go and leave this place, leave this person, they are not yours. They have been redeemed from the curse of the law. Jesus hung on the cross for them. And today, Lord Jesus, we receive the complete work that you have done on the cross of Calvary. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, that as we stand in your presence today, we can boldly declare that Satan has nothing in us. Yes, we used to serve him, but not anymore. We used to be enslaved to him, but not anymore. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, that we owed a debt we could not pay. When you paid this one debt that you never owed, we will make it worth your while, Lord Jesus, that you paid something. It is worth it. And today, we stand here with our children and we speak up, up to the third and the fourth generation. Lord, they will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living up to a thousandth generation of those who love you. Father, we thank you that grace and mercy shall follow your people all the days of their lives for as long as they shall dwell in the house of the Lord. We thank you, Lord God and Mother, that not only have you changed the course of our lives, you have changed the very meaning of our life. That today in this place, life has a new meaning. We thank you, Lord God and Mother, that life here has more weight, that we are weightier than before we came in here. That, oh Lord God, we have a different perspective in the name of Jesus. Our faces are shining with your glory. Our heads have been anointed with fresh oil. Our horn has been strengthened like the horn of a unicorn. We thank you, Lord, that you have anointed us with fresh oils in this place. And goodness and mercy shall follow your people for all. Not only for this week, not only for the next month, not only until the end of the year. Lord, it will follow them all the days of their lives. They shall be blessed until the day they step out of this body when they shall put it off like a tent and they put on glory. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. But today we declare in this place, Mudimu, even as a church, that this whole congregation shall stand before you one day in heaven. None of them shall be lost. Not one soul in this place shall go back into the world. Not one soul in this place shall miss heaven. Lord God Almighty, we thank you that on the day of judgment, we shall occupy a significant place before your throne as a church and still identify each other as a person I saw somewhere called the, the through a tabernacle many years ago. Thank you, Lord, that these faces have not only recorded, been recorded in this church, but they've been captured also for heaven, and they shall forever be, hold the glory of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Jesus, thank you that you have redeemed these people for eternity, and none of these people shall fall back into the hands of the boys who are going to take them back into the cage. Devil, you have nothing in us and you shall have no soul in this place in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Shall we have the confession before we go? Hallelujah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Thank you, 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 Lord. Come on. Lord, we thank and praise you. Glory, glory, glory. Oh, God, Yes, Lord. Shall we just go after me? My Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the plan of redemption. That you sent your son to take my place at the slave market where I was caged in by my sins and unrighteous acts. I thank you, Lord, that I am healed and free from all sin, 
sickness and disease and I receive my complete redemption which Jesus attained for me no longer to be enslaved to any of the chains that used to bind me my whole spirit soul and body are kept blameless until Jesus comes again amen and shout at the top of your voice to the Lord hallelujah Lord thank you Lord yes thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord